Welcome back guys, I'm Silicon Thaumaturgy and today we're going to take an in-depth look at one of my favorite tools and one of my new favorite tools, the XY and XYZ plots respectively. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you've probably realized that I may or may not be unreasonably obsessed with making XY plots out of any conceivable combination of variables. Little did I know that contributor XRPG Game over at GitHub had created a custom script for a new and improved XYZ plot so you can see the impact of plots in the third dimension. Well, actually it's still in 2D. Instead of generating a three-dimensional image, it generates multiple XY plots that you can switch between. But that's okay because it's still super useful because I can test multiple variables much more easily. This video also serves as a tutorial for the regular XY plot script, which is included by default and does not need installation. If you want to use the XYZ script, you will have to install it. If you don't want to do this, just skip ahead to the bookmarks in the video description. From the automatic 11.11 homepage, navigate to the wiki, then to prompt scripts. Then scroll down to the XYZ plot script and click the link. Once there, navigate to files. Go to the xyzplot.html file and then right click to save as a raw file in the scripts directory in your automatic 11.11 WebGUI installation folder. Go back to the files and then select the xyzplot.py file and right click the raw button to save this in your scripts directory as well. Once that is done, Reload the UI in the automatic 11.11 interface. After that, your script will appear in the drop-down box in the image generation screen. Next, let's cover how to set up the XY plot in the automatic 11.11 web GUI interface. First, scroll down to the bottom and click the scripts drop-down. Then, click on the XYZ plot and the interface where the script will appear. We will either need to populate the variables we want for X, Y, and Z, or populate nothing, so the row isn't used. Before doing this, keep in mind where each variable will go in the output. Just like in standard math notation, the variable on the x-axis will be displayed horizontally, and the variable on the y-axis will be displayed vertically. Finally, each value of z will have a separate xy plot created for it. I can already hear you asking, how do I set the original xy plot? In return, I'd ask where your sense of adventure is. But in all seriousness, it is exactly the same, except that you select XY plot from the drop down, and after you select it, there will only be two rows of variables to populate instead of three. Additionally, the default Y value for the XY plot is nothing. Additionally, both of these scripts can be used in the image to image tab as well. On to the variables, and oh boy, there are a lot of them. I honestly haven't even touched some of these myself. Unfortunately, Three of these variables, high res upscale, styles, and VAE, are not available in the XYZ plot and only in the XY plot. A couple of these variables can only be used with the high res fix or in the image to image tab. I made a table showing you some basic information about all the variables. Ones that I've tested myself are in bold. Availability is which plot type it works with. Type is what kind of variable it is. Text is self explanatory. Integer means you can only use whole numbers and continuous means you can use decimals. Let's move on to how to format these inputs and test exactly what you want. The first and most simple way to add inputs is just to separate them with commas. This works for both numerical and text variables and is the only option for text variables. If you have a particularly OCD friend that you want to torment, you can actually move these out of numerical order and it still works fine. If you need to use a real comma in your inputs, you'll need to surround that particular input with quotation marks so the script does not interpret it as a separator major pitfall here is that you cannot have spaces before or after the comma, or it will mess things up. You can also specify a range, which comes in several different flavors, though these only work for numerical inputs. In the simplest one, you can specify the endpoints of your range with the dash dividing them. This will test every whole number between the two endpoints, including those endpoints. Instead of just testing whole numbers, you can specify how many sections you want to divide the range into by adding brackets with the whole number inside after the range. For these, both endpoints will be tested, with the remainder being equally spaced within the range. Last, and probably least, we have increment and decrement. Instead of using brackets, use the parentheses, and the number inside can be either positive for incrementing or negative for decrementing, and can be either a whole number or a decimal. While executing this, it will start at the starting point of your range, and then increment or decrement until it goes outside the range you specified. 
When doing this, you have to make sure your range goes in the same direction as the increment or decrement. As you can imagine, this is pretty easy to mess up and not very intuitive. Next, we're going to cover how the XY plot and the XYZ plot show their outputs. For XY plots, this is quite simple. In your Outputs folder in the Stable Diffusion directory, they will be saved to the Text to Image Grids folder. For XYZ plots, it's a little bit trickier. In your Outputs Text to Image folder, there will be a subfolder called XYZ. In there, each plot you run will have its own numbered subfolder. In each of these, there is a folder containing the raw images and an HTML file. To see the plot, you have to open the HTML file in your browser. Once it is open, use your mouse wheel to scroll between the different XY plots, symbolized by the green light in the upper left. The main downside to XYZ plot is that it doesn't save your grid as an image file. So if you want a picture of the grid, you'll have to take a screenshot, and that will be limited by your monitor resolution. On the other hand, you can save images you like directly from here by right-clicking on them instead of having to dig through all the files. Finally, here are some tips and tricks I didn't cover elsewhere in the video. First, save your list if you think you might reuse them. I have a spreadsheet where I save most of my parameters for XYZ plots. That way, I'm not reinventing the wheel each time. This is particularly useful for stuff like samplers, where it's a pain to type it out every single time. You might be concerned that if you do all the work to set up an XYZ script, but want to do another generation that you lose it all. This is actually not the case. You can disable the script by selecting None in the script dropdown, do whatever you need to do, then reselect the XYZ plot. All the stuff you populate will still be there. This also works for other scripts. In fact, you can have settings populated for each script simultaneously. However, this will not apply if you restart Stable Diffusion or refresh the automatic 11.11 WebGUI interface. When using batch count or batch sizes above 1, each cell on the grid will contain each of the images created under that specific condition. However, this will also create many small grids for each condition in your text-to-image grids folder. If you only use a few values for your x and y axis, it makes the grid with the full 5 12 by 5 12 images. Under the default settings, the maximum dimension of these grids is limited to 4,000 pixels. So once you get to 7 by 7 or equivalent, it'll start shrinking down your images to put them in the grid. If you want to create grids bigger than 4,000 pixels, you have to go into the settings under the tab for Saving Images slash Grids and deselect the setting causing it to downscale, as pictured here. And at last, we're finally done. I hope you all learned at least something new about the XY and XYZ plots that will help you make the images you want. As always, if you enjoyed this and found it useful, please like and subscribe. If you have any topics you want me to cover in future videos, don't be afraid to leave a comment. Until next time.